Nowadays, that road rage stuff, that's for the birds, bro. Man, look at this guy. Goodness, put your dang tarp on. Now that he's sandblasting my car. Put one right between your, your eyes. Equipment doubled and they don't want to double the rate. This just don't make sense. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Well, the used equipment is trash. So there's $22,000 and more taxes. We are headed down 35 South. We are passing through Austin right now, headed to Luling, Texas, right between San Antonio and Houston. We are headed to look at some 48 foot flatbeds for a new customer that we developed in the last month and a half. Yeah, we, we have tons of flatbeds already and step decks, but one of our customers is using them all and we don't want to take anything from that customer. That customer helped us get where we're at today. So if anything, we want to be able to give them more. Man, look at this guy. Goodness, put your dang tarp on. Now that he's sandblasted my car. Goodness. One day I'm moving back to South Texas. I'm gonna live on the coast. Gotta, gotta go back to where I came from. I was born in Oasis County, Texas, Corpus Christi. Moved up to Dallas, Fort Worth when I was six years old with my parents. But I love all the tacos. It's heaven. And South Texas has the best food too. We are 11 miles from Alamo City Trailer Sales out here in the wonderful booms of Texas. There's so many people with guns. People start tripping and stuff. I'm like, dude, do you even know who you're talking to? Like, you don't know that man, leave him alone. He can kill you. And all because of you got cut off or you got brake checked or you got, you know what I mean? I'm like, someone brake checks me, I'll slow down and let them go. Because I tell you what, they don't know they got a killer in this car. I'm not worried about them, I'm worried about myself. I'm not afraid of them, I'm afraid of myself. Three minutes, 1.9 miles. This does not look like the place we were supposed to be coming to. Let me re-look it up. Okay, 3.9 miles away. Yeah, that didn't look right, because it wasn't. Mom was wrong again, Bobby Boucher. Yeah, I was thinking like, why would there be a trailer place or a big sales place for semi stuff in the city? You don't have enough room to even turn in there. Well, the address was incorrect that I had plugged in. <laughs> city Hall was definitely the distinguishing factor. Look at all these trailers, baby. Ooh. Oh, they got some 53 foots over there too. Huh. All righty, we've made it. Let's go see what uh, they got for sale. They got plenty, look at that. Wow, brand new and new. Yes, ma'am, I'm coming in from uh, Fort Worth. I called regarding some 48 foot flats y'all had for sale. Awesome, thank you very much. I was thinking we probably should go check some of them out. If you'll let them know, we'll be out there looking at all the 48s. I've seen all the used one over here. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. These are the Great Danes that they have for sale. Hey, they're in really good condition too. Dang, that's, that's new. Wow, that's sweet. The first thing we look for in a good trailer is we take a look at the frame and the fifth wheel plate to make sure it doesn't have rust. Luckily, these trailers that we're buying are 2018 and 19 models, so it's very difficult for rust to develop because it doesn't have the age. But when you're shopping in anything that's older than like a 15, 2015 and down, you need to be able to check the fifth wheel plate. This is the fifth wheel plate that you want to take a look at. You see all these beams that are running across here? That is all surface rust. That's not bad. That needs paint. That way it lasts longer. But sometimes there's pitting, real heavy pitting, and it starts to corrode the, uh, the metal from the rust. And man, you really don't want to waste your time with that type of stuff. All it's gonna do is cost you more money in the end. And we're in it for the long run, so sometimes I think about just buying some new trailers. I think I wanna buy new trailers and not used ones. <laughs> the new ones are, are uh, so pretty. If you buy used ones, you can make your money go further though, so. I need one of these. This is a 48 foot step deck with a dovetail, real easy to load equipment on. I might get one of those too. We have a customer around Fort Worth that's been asking us to move a lot of equipment, but all my step decks don't have dovetails. You don't need dovetails for concrete, so we've been in the concrete business for six years now, and man, this is a beautiful trailer. Look at this. Alumatech, frameless. This thing goes in the air with no frame. Whew. It's a little hot. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, uh, new and used. We're here to look at whatever you got. Yes, sir, you ready? Awesome. Is that all y'all's used inventory on that side? 
Okay, and you, you got any used round bottoms as well? Nope. No? Is that these right here? And this is a 19 model? Yeah. Then my trailers are in really good condition then. <laughs> yeah, but it's crazy how you can get a trailer like this for way cheaper and you are ready to go and it's still gonna service the same thing. Yeah, and we're, we're ready to go. We already have it all approved and ready to go. So let's go inside and let's get some numbers at first. That way we know what we're looking at. Well, the used equipment is trash. <laughs> Man, we came all the way over here because when purchasing new, uh, used equipment, you have to be uh, very cautious. Somebody else's fleet, you don't know how they maintained it. Going to look at those Great Danes, we're not paying 29,000 for those trailers. These new ones are around 45 grand. I just like new. Something wrong with that? Yeah, the price. What's wrong about that? Those round bottoms, Armor Light, it's not even like a good brand trailer. $50,000. This blows my mind. Man, we got to get these customers to come up on this rate, right? Equipment doubled and they don't want to double the rate. This is not make sense. Fuel doubled, they don't want to double the rate. I wonder what's going to happen with this economy. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to find out because we're not leaving it. We're going to stay right here and we're going to keep on doing it. Look at this, 453 foot, $183,800. And then because they're new, you have to pay FET tax of 12%. So there's $22,000 and more taxes. Everybody wants their share. They just want to leave enough meat on the bone for us. So we're going to get some meat on the bone right now, baby. Cruise market since the 1900s, 619 North Colorado. Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> I can't think when this food's around me. I, I get uh, thoughtless. Look at this rib, dude. Wait till you taste that. What about this turkey? Mm. Bro, falls apart. It's like so moisturized. I thought it was gonna be dry. Wow, we should've got more turkey. These pork ribs may be the best pork ribs I've ever had. Really? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not over exaggerating. Yeah. That turkey has to be the best turkey I've ever had. Yeah, that was good. And we're not a sponsor, so they're not paying it. We paid for this meal. Yeah. And we are just spreading the word on good barbecue. But it didn't need to be spread. Especially to you northerners. Oh my God. <laughs> northerners. Y'all need to know what's down here, bruh. But for those who don't know. Heaven is down here. Yeah, for those who don't know, I'm from Montana. And we ain't got nothing like this. Nothing this good. The only thing you got is Yellowstone up there. It's the only thing we know of down here. Well, yeah, if you like hunting and fishing and mountains, it's a good place. I love the, all that if stuff. If you like civilization, you come down here. I like the style. I like how you go in there into the smokehouse, get your meat, yeah. come out here. And and it's it was hard for me to, to cope with them not having French fries. Very hot. So, I don't know who gave you the impression that it's normal to have french fries. At it a is. No, it's it not. is, yes. Dude, I've never seen it. Nobody has fries at a barbecue place. They do. No, they don't. They do. I'm telling you, dude. We, we're going to do a survey. How yeah, many, we are going to do a survey. People, I think the real oh, question right. should be, is it standard for a barbecue place to have french fries? Ah, uh, OK, OK, OK. Because the ask, should they? Then I think you're going to be 50-50. Think so? I would say three people out of ten. Out of ten would say, and I would say five out of ten. We're gonna have to test this theory. What do you think? <laughs> Is it standard to have French fries at a barbecue restaurant? Let me get a to-go box. Cool, cool. YouTube family, we have made it back to Funky Town, Fort Worth, Texas. We drove 600 miles a day. My uh, nala got hurt. I'm ready for a nap. But meanwhile, we were very thankful. We went on this trip and uh, checked out these trailers. These trailers were not in the condition that we thought they were in. We were hoping they were in better condition for the price that they were asking. But on the way up to our down to San Antonio from Fort Worth, we had a phone call from a, a dealership that was up here that located a 53 foot flatbed aluminum combo and uh, we ended up cracking a deal. Happened to be right in our backyard. We didn't have to drive to San Antonio to go get them. Whew. Home sweet home. 
Thank you guys for watching. We will never forget you. So comment and let us know who, who's watching and let us know who's giving the thumbs up. Matter of fact, and if you're brave enough, let us know who's giving the thumbs down too. You, you know you're doing right when you got haters. So let us know who you are. Don't be afraid, I already know who, who it is. I know your kids, I know your parents. Come on, they know that I know who they are.